Welcome to the Divine Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Roche, and together we are walking the path of discovering your true self and the alignment with your soul. Through these conversations, you will experience a deeper level of connection with yourself and the universe, and most importantly, you will trust in your spiritual journey ahead. Let's begin. Hello, Larissa. Oh my gosh. I am so excited to have you joining me today for the podcast. So first and foremost, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh my God. I'm so excited to be here. So thank you. So excited. Yay. Awesome. So I'm really excited for today's topic because we are both moms and we're going to be talking about, you know, motherhood and spirituality and parenting and how all of that ties in together. So to, you know, kick this off, you know, first a little bit of background. I have two daughters, you have two daughters. So I I just love that. And so I would love to first start off this episode with asking you, you know, kind of sharing your experience about motherhood and kind of where spirituality kind of came into your life and how it's come in, in, in regards to your parenting journey. So, um, when I had my first daughter, I was not spiritual at all. I was just like a regular person living life. So I know that's, you know, really different for you. Um, but uh, when my daughter was born, my first daughter, I remember um, she, so I had like a lot of problems like in my pregnancy and then she was born really early. She had to stay in the NICU. So there was a day uh, where finally I was like discharged and she was going to stay. And it was like one of the worst days of my entire life. All right. Like you just have to leave. You have to leave your kid there. Then I had to go back to my life. And I remember going home was horrible. Um, like no one was picking me up, you know, and then I had just had surgery and they were like, don't do any stairs, but I had to do stairs, you know? Um, and I remember I made my, you know, my way home and I had to clean my house and all these things. And I remember sitting on the bed finally, and I, in my bag, I had put like her, her little, uh, the little burpee and it still smelled like her. And I was just like crying and I started writing. And looking back, like at everything I was writing at that time, it was very spiritual. Like I was talking about, like, I think that we are connected. Like we have this tether that connects us and I can still feel her. And I feel like I can almost see her, you know, like I can sit. And if I'm like really still, I can see that her eyes are closed or I can see that she's looking around. Like I just felt this intense connection with her. And like through that, I also felt connected to God. Like I would start writing about like, you know, God is with us and things like that. Um, So reading all that back like years later, I was like, whoa, like that was really deep. You know, I don't think I knew like how deep that was at the time. Um, But then, you know, like some time passes and you kind of I got disconnected from all of that again. You know, we're just like, okay, so now she has all these therapies and I went back to school and she had school and doctors. And and it's just like, okay, you get like wrapped up in the grind of life. And I didn't really feel connected to that anymore. And then fast forward, you know, I had my second daughter again, more life, right? Um, But then over the pandemic, I had my really true, like, spiritual awakening. um, And it's like started, like, not that it started again, but I finally just was like, okay, I'm not going to forget what's happening. I'm going to like walk this path. And it just has expanded since then. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love that. And it's so cool. I think just from my experience too. And I think that regardless if you had kids and then you had your spiritual awakening or you kind of were already spiritually connected and then you had kids, but it's kind of like this experience where you really on such a deep, deep level, like there's no deeper level of experience of connection with someone, I think, than someone who you created yourself. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's one of those things where, yeah, your soul, your souls are so connected and nothing could ever take that away or change that. And I think that's so cool to, you know, see how you having even experienced kind of both sides of that, like pre spiritual awakening and post spiritual awakening and your connection with your daughters. Um, So that is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. Yeah. 
And I didn't even realize that until like I looked back at like all the journals because I was like writing poems and journals and I looked back at it and I was like, wow, like I think this started then, but then I just kind of put it to the side, you know, so it was really interesting just to see it again. Like, oh, wow, I, this happened to me before and I just forgot. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, So I would love to hear your perspective on something because I think that as moms, especially we feel this, but for all the dads out there who are listening to this, we're not excluding you, you're included too, but like we can only speak from the mother's perspective. (laughs) And so the topic of mom guilt comes up a lot when it comes to like parenthood and, you know, I think as a mom, just in general, biologically how it is, like the child is it's, it's, you know, the child grew inside of you. So it's, it makes sense that the, that the baby and the young child is, just is, has that deeper connection or has a deeper kind of like mom, 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 this mom, that like whatever, you know? So how do you deal with the energy of like mom guilt, which is essentially, you know, when you try to go do something for yourself or when you're, you know, whatever you have to do, where it's that, that guilty feeling where you're like, but I should be there for my kid. But also then that means that I'm not taking care of myself or doing something for me, right? So I would love to hear your perspective on that and how that's shown up for you, you know, over the years, or if there's any difference between like pre-spiritual awakening, post-spiritual awakening, how has that been for you? Yeah, it's definitely been different, um, you know, like pre and post. Like when my first daughter was born, she had like, um, she had a medical malpractice while she was in the NICU and it was horrible. And I remember like, I had this like gut feeling of like, this doesn't seem right. And then it got so much worse. And then I beat myself up for it because I was like, Oh my Mm. gosh, like Larissa, you knew, you knew, why did you let the doctors do that? So, um, so I held on to that for a really long time. Um, a really long time. Like even like as she's grown up, not right now, but um, yeah. cause I, I really blame myself. Like there, there was a moment, Larissa, where you could have said something. Um, but I learned from that point, you know, like whatever I notice, whatever I say, I really have to speak up for her, you know? And I'm, I've always yeah. been that kind of person that's like quiet and just kind of falls back. So that was a really big lesson. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've seen mom guilt. Oh, no, I've experienced mom guilt in a lot of different ways. And like you said, like, Sometimes you want to like get away and then you have that guilt. Like, shouldn't I be with my kids? Um, But also like the flip side, like sometimes you've been around the kids for so long, you want to get away and then you have that guilt. Like, why do I want to get away from them? Right. Um, (laughs) um, But then also, just like I said, you know, with my daughter, sometimes there are things that happen um, where you just kind of beat yourself up for it. Like, oh my gosh, I should have known better. How did I let that happen? Um, Mm. And I did receive like a message about guilt. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of things wrapped up in guilt, right? Like, okay, we all have like a soul path, right? We all have some things that are just supposed to happen. And I think when when these bad things happen and you kind of beat yourself up, you have to remind yourself, like not just you, but the other person also agreed to these things. They like, okay, I needed that lesson so I could learn. You always speak up for her, right? Like I will always, always speak up for her forever. But she needed that for, I don't know what, you know, for whatever reason she chose. So it's like just that first part of just like understanding everything happens because it's part of the path that we all agreed to, you know? And I feel like that really helped me to move on from what happened to her. Like, you know what? I learned my lesson. I grew from that. I don't know what lesson she needed, Um, Mm -hmm. but it was part of the path and we both lived it and it's done. And I don't have to hold the guilt anymore from it, you know? Yes. That's so huge. That's so huge. Yeah. So in regards to what you just talked about, I also, what I've come to learn as well is that, you know, we often, I think the perspective is that, you know, we're grownups, we know we're, you know, in the world, in society, supposed to be mature and all the things, right? Some more than others, but you know what I mean? And it's, it's like, I think the overall perspective is, you know, of course, we're here to raise our children and to, you know, support them in becoming the human that they have come here to actually be. But there is a very real experience where I feel like children teach us so much. And And I would even argue to say that they are even greater teachers for us than we are to them. (laughs) Like we're here to help them with, um, you know, like 
integrating into society and, and becoming the human and like learning to tie their shoes and all the things, right? But really, I feel like children are so wise and are the greatest teachers. And I've also seen that too, with not just the guilt thing, but just in any sort of way where we might get triggered, or we feel like there's, you know, something comes up, you feel frustrated, this, this, like whatever. And it's such an opportunity for us to heal for ourselves, but even more specifically healing our inner child. You know, I feel like that's such a huge, huge, huge part of the journey. And I just love what you said about understanding that you and that specific soul, like your child, you both have agreed and chosen to walk this path, to walk this path, this human experience. And both of you were meant to learn, you know what I mean? And, and if both of you were meant to grow, and I totally agree with what you said about, you know, whatever the thing, the situation was, like, they chose that too, you know, as hard as it might, it might seem and in and, and sound and it's like, for, you know, whatever the situation is, sometimes it's, 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 it can be harder to wrap our head around that. But at the end of the day, we have both come here to grow, right? And to learn and, and to expand and our souls really do support each other in that, you know? Yeah, completely. Um, <laughs> completely. I like that so much. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I wanted to add in about guilt is I think, you know, there's some, you know, obviously like, with guilt, there's also like some kind of like internalized like judgment going on, you know, like I should have been better. I should have done better, you know? Um, and I just, you know, there is no judgment like in the spiritual realm, you know, like there's no one looking down on us like, Oh, look at her. You know what I mean? Like judgment yeah. is just like an us thing. And, um, it reminded me, you know, I was thinking about this the other day and it really reminded me of when I was like growing up and like all those choose your own story books, you know, like there's some, like, I remember I had like this goosebumps book and on like the first page, there's like an option, like, do you go to the mall with your friend or not? And if you say not, then the next page is the end. Like, oh, well you stayed home and everything was fine and you missed, you know, the whole thing. And so just to say that some decisions don't really lead to like bad things. It's just every decision, you know, just changes something, right? And I think mm -hmm. we should stop. I think it's really hard for moms to like let some things go. Um, I think definitely more for certain people than others like me. Like I beat myself up all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's finding or understanding that every action does create a consequence, but you don't have to hold those ju like just the choices over yourself. You know, like it's okay yeah. to just say that was my choice and it's done, yeah. you know, move on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's such a huge key thing that you mentioned too is is it's like extracting the lesson out of the the thing or whatever like the lesson, the learning experience, the strength, power, whatever, and then moving on. That's essentially what it's all about and that I think is one of the most important parts of just even like aside from our relationship as parents and to our children, it's like in general, life in general, you know, extract the lesson and then move forward. Otherwise, we get stuck in a loop. And it's something where, you know, it's like you can't change what happened. Like you can't change it. So it's you're you're much better off and much more empowered to take what what you can from the situation and then move forward with it with that greater wisdom. You know, you don't know what you don't know until you know. And then once you do know, then you can do better. But until then, it's kind of like, how would you have known? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So well said. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, you know, talking about the human experience and talking about, you know, we're here obviously as spiritual beings in this human experience. Um, what are some ways that you have felt or that you have been maybe guided or just how has it shown up for you in regards to kind of using your spiritual connection and awareness and things that come through for you in regards to supporting you in raising your kids or, you know, dealing with certain situations with them or whatever the thing might be? How has that shown up for you or helped you? I think, um, this is so interesting. So I, you know, now I'm like spiritual now, right? And I'll talk to like, you know, my higher self or my spirit team or whatever archangels like talking to me. Um, but I was dealing with a situation with my daughter. Um, both my daughters have special needs and my second daughter, she's autistic and we 
we're just going through, I'm not sure, you know? And I was really struggling, right? And I remember there was a time where I just kept on, every time she got into like this um, big behavior state, I would just get really quiet and I would start trying to talk to her higher self. And I'd be like, listen, what does she need right now? You know, like, how can I help her? What does she need? What is the problem? Like, I don't understand. And I swear, every single time I tried to talk to her higher self, her higher self would just say like two words, like, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm not here for you. Like really rude and just like short, like, no, no, stop. I'm not here for you. <laughs> just like, guys, I don't get it. Like, I'm literally asking for help. Um, but then later on, like as time is going on, I realized that I was approaching spirituality from a very human perspective. Like I'm mm. looking for help and I'm like pointing a finger like you need to tell me what to do, you know, like still not understanding that I it's all about me. Like everything comes back to me, you know, like why was I trying to talk to her higher self? She's like a four year old kid when I could be talking right. to my higher self. Like, hey, higher self, we are dealing with this and this is going on for a really long time. Like, please, please, like, what do we do next? How can I show up for this situation? How can I help, you know, whatever's happening? So that was just so funny. Like, it just kind of hit me like, oh, wow, I was doing spirituality in a really human way, like going to this kid, <laughs> higher self, help me, help me, um, when I should have been going to me all along. Oh, my and gosh. And once I that came back to myself. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Once I came back to myself, um, the, a really big shift happened where it's just like, okay, let's just focus on this. Let's focus on this. Let's watch for that. You know, then it's like you get all these like little cues, what to look for, what to do, how to respond. Um, when you tap into yourself, you find out what to do. Mm, oh, my God. So like that is a mic drop moment right there. I feel like <laughs> that's so, so good. And, and you know what the biggest thing is that I see as you, as you say that is it's, it's, it's like that acknowledgement of what we hear all the time in the spirituality world, but that the answers are within you, that you have the answers, right? Rather than feeling like, well, it's her behavior. So like, she has the answers to what I need to do versus no, actually my higher self knows exactly what to do. Let me tune into her, <laughs> you know? So that is amazing. I love that. And I'm going to use that. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so, so good. Um, and, you know, and I think too, just with regards to your, like how you show up from that empowered state, then also influences how she receives you too, yes. right? Like if you're in that place, connected to your higher self, asking for you, your higher self, you know, guidance, whatever, and then showing up from that place of, okay, I trust in myself, I am empowered in who I am as a mom, then how she receives it, like the way, whatever you say to her, or how you, you know, show up for her, whatever the thing is, it'll be received in such a different way because then yeah. her self, is like, yes, this is exactly what I needed. Because I think sometimes yeah. they don't even know what they need. <laughs> you know, like they don't, yeah, totally. they have no idea. They're just like, oh yeah, I'm just going to respond to you in a certain way. You do this. Nope, mm -hmm. nope, nope. Then it's like, boom, hit, like you got it. It's like ding, ding, ding. And then she leans into it or relaxes into whatever the thing actually is, you know? Yeah, completely. And then, you know, when you're, when it, everything is getting so, so stressful, it's like you start, like, even if like, I am, I don't know how I do this. I'm extremely calm. Like once the tantrums happen, like, I don't know if it was my upbringing or something. Like as soon as things start going crazy, I'm just like, okay, what do you want? You know, like mm. we have like therapists coming in and for teachers and they're like, Larissa, you're amazing. How do you do that? And I'm like, I don't know, man. But it's like, <laughs> you know, I've always been like that, you know, but then it's like when you tap into your higher self, it's like even the calm feels like it feels like lovey or something like before. Mm. It's kind of like detached, like, OK, I'm here with you. I'm calm. I'm not. You know what I mean? Um, but then when you put pull your higher self into that, it's kind of like I'm here and I'm it's like. It's like you're trying to be the rock or something. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's yeah. like I'm bringing the extra calm from myself and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to like share this calm with you. You know, it just kind of changes the whole situation. Yes. So now that's what I always do. I call in my higher self, like, please just sit with me, sit with us. And it does like she responds a little differently. 
I -hmm. still do the same kind of things that I do. Like I'm just really, you know, chill, but, um, it just kind of changes like something. I don't, I can't explain it. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I love that. And I can totally just feel that as you were explaining that I could feel (laughs) as though like from you, there's this like wave of calm that just like is expanded out from your energy and wraps up your daughter. And it's just like, just you know what I mean? That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting that. my goosebumps. Yes. 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 And the other thing that I was I was gonna say is that you know you you mentioned you know like I have no idea how I'm I I stay in that calm state and the only thing that I can say is that it's because you were meant to be their mom. You know, anyone else it would have been like, you know, because it it happens like we get triggered by that tantrumy you know experience at some points yeah. and it is hard to sometimes like stay calm or not be triggered or whatever. So, you know, to, for you to have the extra patience that's needed for, you know, your your daughters, it's like, of course, of course, of course you would have that because, <laughs> you know, you were meant to be their mama. And it, that's yeah. such a beautiful thing. I love that so much. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you for saying that. But that kind of brings me back to something you said earlier about how, you know, like having kids kind of like heals your inner child. And I feel like sometimes when I'm in these situations, I I think about that, like, how would my parents have acted like if they had these two kids? Because I mean, with, you know, my older daughter and all of her like physical, you know, things going on, she needs so many doctors and medication. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Like I sometimes I think like, how would my parents have dealt with this? And then my younger daughter, I already know because, you know, we live with them when she was, you know, little. Um, so I already know they couldn't tolerate that, you know, but even that, right. I mean, that kind of also brings up those feelings of like, how, why, if like, I, I was always like sick growing up, I had lots of ear infections. Like I was always, mm. I don't know, like, <laughs> so I think about myself as like my older daughter, myself as my younger daughter. And I think like, why couldn't I get that same, like what I give my kids, you know, like mm. I remember it was like a side note. I remember when my first daughter was born, right? And that same day, like I came home, worst day of my life, then I had to like sit and I wrote like a poem and I started writing. And um, I remember I wrote out when I got home this like five year plan, like, okay, I am kind of like, I felt worthless. Like I don't deserve this like perfect kid. And so I I wrote out this five year plan, like I'm going to do this and this, I'm going to finish school, get my license, I'm going to get a real job and, you know, blah, 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 right? And I I just always think that too, you know, like if I, as soon as I had my kids, I'm like, oh my God, I got to like fix my life. I have to be better. Sometimes I think that also like, you know, vice versa, like my inner child is so sad. Like, but why didn't my parents sit down and say, oh my God, I have this precious little kid. Like, what am I going to do now? And I, you know, I think that always comes back, you know, that kind of cycle of, you know, I do these things for my kids and it's like, oh, but why didn't my parents do this? Oh, I do this for my kid. Oh my God, that never happened for me. Um, So I feel that, that like cycle of inner child and parenting and inner child. Yeah, yeah, I totally resonate with that because I've had very similar experience too, or like thoughts like that. And you know what has actually helped me with that is that I will then feel my inner child being included with my two daughters. So then it's like I have three kids. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> you know, so then I'm like, okay, here's the three of us, these three little girls and, you know, yes. including my inner child in it so that she can experience that same, um, you know, whatever the thing is in that moment, but like yeah. having her be in it and, and it's kind of like, you know, I think that that has been so helpful. And then the other thing that I found have found helpful with that is that I will like thank her for the experience that that she did go through because that was what I needed to learn so that I could be who I am now as a mom too. You know what I mean? Where it's like, maybe I would not have been like this had I not had that type of experience as a a young child, even though, you know, it may have been painful or whatever the thing is, but now, you know, thank you for going through that because now I can be the mom that I, that these girls deserve and that you get to be a part of it too. You know, I found those two things to be super helpful in those kinds of situations. I love that you brought this up because it's so true and it's so real, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I've never thought to like, that's really deep. I've never thought to like thank her, but I know that I've had like conversations. Like I remember I was asking like my higher self, um, because I was reflecting on how much I love my kids, right? Just, just general, just love, like not even like the things I do, just, I really love them, you know? And I remember I was asking my higher self, like, if, 
my inner child wants to feel this love. Why couldn't they have love? You know, like there was something in there about um, yoga parenting. Like I needed, oh, it was about my second daughter, right? How I needed to learn, or that's like part of what I'm doing, right? Even though I'm really chill, like my brain is kind of like going off. And one of the lessons that I'm trying to learn is to control my emotions, right? So on the outside, I'm doing great. I'm really chill. But on the inside, I do, you know, I get worked up too. Like, mm -hmm. why is she still going off, right? And then I realized it was because um, I have to learn how to control my emotions. And then I remember asking my higher self, like, but why? If that's part of what I have to do, my destiny in life to control emotions, why couldn't I have learned this already? Why do I have to like go through this crazy stuff with my kids to learn this? And they were telling me, like they were explaining that sometimes you don't get that yoga parent. You know, you don't get the parent that's going to sit and do the breath work and the stretching because you're supposed to be that yoga parent. They were like, Larissa, mm -hmm. you were always meant to be the yoga parent. You weren't meant to just get that because if you just had that, would it really have mattered? Like if you had parents that sat and did the breath work and like kept everything calm and worked through your feelings, would you have grown up knowing that you can do that? And I was like, wow, let's see. But I like what you said about thanking your, your inner child. Like, wow, I should probably do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so good. That's so good. And yeah, I think it's one of those things too. A part of it is like, I think there's always that sense of mystery too, where it's like, that deep, you know, if we, when we ask the question, like, why did I have to go through that? And it's like, yeah, okay, I get the lesson. I get this, whatever. But then there's still that, like, why, but why? <laughs> like to explain this to me, you know? Yeah. And I think that's our human part that needs the answer. That's just like, explain every little bit of this so that I, you know, and, and I think part of our journeys too, is to be able to have that sense of mystery and be okay with not always having the answer too you know it's kind of like we can explain it to this um to this place or have it make sense to this amount but in our human logical whatever thing it's kind of like there are moments sometimes i think where there's still a little bit of mystery and the universe is like you know the divine is like we need you to be okay with that yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. 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 But I love that. I love that so much. And, you know, I think in also in the sense of just in general, with regards to parenthood, like, of course, every parenting journey, every even between two children, right? It's, it's always going to be a different journey, even though, you know, if you have multiple kids, their development of their soul and who they are is going to look different. And so each one will come with different hardships or different struggles. And you've spoken to that a little bit here um, so far. And so I would love for you to share, you know, what would you say has been maybe one of the biggest tools or experiences or just like something that you hold very dearly to you and your heart that helps support you through those moments, you know, um, like, you know, everyone has different situations, different experiences, but what would you say has been the most impactful for you so far in your journey in moving through any sort of hardship or struggle? I think, you know, a lot of that goes back to like what we kind of touched on earlier about, you know, like we are all souls. We all have a destiny. We all have things we have to go through, you know? And there was like, once I understood that, it was a lot easier to just accept the harder things in life, you know, like, okay, maybe just like we were just saying about mystery, maybe I don't understand the whole thing, but I can still see the lesson. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I don't really yeah. understand why this situation, but I understand the lesson. I can see how I grew, how I changed from that situation. Um, so I think yeah. that's really important just to know that we all have a soul path. We all have ways that our soul wants to grow and we can't, I think a lot of people, I mean, I've, oh gosh, I've heard this a lot. You know, people ask like, why do we go through hard things? Right. Like in, you know, online or whatever. And a lot of people like to use these words, you know, like I didn't deserve this or this isn't fair. And, you know, again, it brings it back yeah. to that's like you're human, you know, saying those things like in the spiritual world, there's no like deserving, there's no fair or not fair, it just is, you know, like experiences just are, they just are mm. like, that's it. They're just there. And then we like looking at them, you know, like they say, um, 
between two people, there's like three perspectives, right? The left person, the right person, and what it is. That's it. It's just what it is. And as we go through things, we put our emotions on them. Um, and I think it's really important, like, not to not have emotions. We're always going to have emotions. We're always going to have a perspective, right? Based on who we are, how we grew up, whatever. Um, but I think it's also important just to hold on to that other part that everything just is. It just is, you know, just like we just are, just like, you know, the universe or source or God, everything just is like energy only exists and things only just happen. Like that's just part of life, you know? And I think it's important um, to just keep that part of your perspective, however you yeah. color it. Oh my gosh. So, so good. I can feel my heart track. It was like, yes, lighting up to what you were just saying. It's so huge and so important. And such a great reminder is that, yeah, it, it it just is. And that's it. It is our human that puts the judgment, that puts the label, that puts the meaning onto anything. And yeah, I, I love that. Because I think too, when you come back to that sense of like, what if this just was and there was no meaning that this means this or this is good or bad or wrong or right or blah, 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 whatever, and just is, I feel like from there, that's also where the higher truth can come through or a solution. If you're needing to find a solution to a certain thing, it's like when we can see it from this perspective of, okay, this, ju this just is, you know, non-judgmental, no comparison, no nothing. But from here, it just is what is the next step or what is a divine solution? And then that really leads us into wherever we're meant to go for our highest good from there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I also think when you kind of like say it like that, like this just is, so let's explore it. You can also get a deeper understanding of yourself. Like you can understand mm. like without my feelings, you know, this just is now let me explore those feelings. Why did I feel like that? Or why did I react that way? Or, you know what I mean? And that's how you start to understand like who you are, like on a soul level, like who you can kind of like pull out, like, pull out yourself from the equation and really study yourself like, oh, I can understand this a little better now, you know, and that's yeah. part of soul growth. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I love this so much. This is there are, have been so many golden nuggets in this conversation today. So thank you so much. Um, there's two last things that I want to ask you before we end today. So the first one, I would love to hear your perspective, you know, in honor of the name of this podcast called The Divine Connection, I would love to hear what your perspective is in terms of your divine connection. Like, what does that feel like for you? Or what does that look like for you personally, for you in your everyday life, whether it's as a mom or not? Um, but what does the divine connection mean to you? Uh, I think the divine connection for me just means finding that thread of the divine within myself in all moments. You know, like, I'm not... Um, like I said, like I'm a person that really likes to beat myself up and really scrutinize and like pick, pick, pick. Um, but when you can kind of find that thread of, oh, like I am divine, I am powerful, I am creating this life, I'm part of this life, I can create the next steps. I think that is, you know, the beautiful like part like of my experience, you know, like mm. I, I know that I'm here to heal myself. Like that's the whole point of my life. You know, I, in all these past lives and, you know, in this current life, like there's been a lot of trauma and I'm here to like heal myself and just use everything I learned to heal myself to just like share that with others. So we can all like start healing and cleaning ourselves up a little, you know? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, beautiful. I love that. And okay. Last one is if you would like, I would love for you to share with our listeners where they can find you and connect with you and any special offers that you may have. Um, and by the way, for everyone who's listening, all the links to what Larissa is about to share are can be found in the show notes below. But go for it, Larissa, let us know where we can find you and connect with you to learn more. So you can check out my website, souldestinyguide.com. And from there, you'll find like all my other social medias, like I'm on YouTube and Instagram, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, souldestinyguide.com. And I do soul blueprint readings. So I help people tap into their soul blueprint. So like I said, we all have a soul path. 
and using my gifts and like all the spiritual, oh, I have a quick note really quickly, uh, all the yeah. spiritual things that I've learned along the way. So I've learned um, that we are supposed to like learn things, right? But it's really important. And I think you've said this before also, it's really, really important that we do things in our own way. Okay. So I think that's like a key takeaway for people. Like if you're trying to learn um, Reiki or Akashic Records or channeling, it's really important that you learn and then you play with it. It's like, I think that's so important, playing with things and making it your own. And I've done that with everything. Like I've learned so many different modalities and I just, I use it as I feel called to use it. And I think that's the best thing you can do. Yes. I love that. It's like you have your toolbox full of your awesome tools and then you kind of like use them as needed or as you feel guided or whatever. That's, and I think that's what makes it so powerful is because you're not, you're like intuitively now supporting people and really yeah. leaning into that guided spiritual way of what someone needs rather than just like textbook, like this is what's happening. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'm offering awesome. a, um, a, an Akashic Records meditation. So if you need immediate help on something, there's a free meditation. There'll be a link for that. And it's about 30 minutes. So you listen to it, you do it, and it'll give you immediate help on whatever you're facing right now. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And it's free. Oh my gosh, everyone needs to go check this out. So, okay, this is all found in the show notes. So go find the links to all of the things. Go check out Larissa say hello to her on social media and also say hello in the comments here below this episode and let us know uh, one of your biggest takeaways here or sharing any of your experiences, something that resonated with you in regards to your journey with parenthood. We would love to hear from you. And of course, if you do have any questions for Larissa, you can also post that in the comments below. And I just want to say once again, thank you so much, Larissa, for joining me today. It was so good having this conversation with you. I feel like we could probably talk for hours about this thing. So <laughs> I thank agree. you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here and be talking to you about the mom stuff. I think it's really cool. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. All right, everyone. As always, I am sending you so much love and angel blessings, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. If you are someone who is seeking to be supported by the angels, to deepen your connection to the angels, to understand how to work with them in your everyday life, then I invite you to join me inside of my membership group called the Angels Guild, where we go deep in understanding how to connect with each of the archangels, understanding how they are here to support you and to guide you on your journey of growth, of connection, of living in your highest potential, opening up to your gifts, living in your truth, and being empowered in who you are. Join me inside of the Angels Guild. All of the details to join the membership are in the show notes below.